Hi everybody! Today we're gonna make a Pong game for two players. You know in my channel there is a Pong game that I made long ago which is just for one player but I wanted to make this game because it is super interesting, super fun and I know that everybody's gonna love it. It is a very classic game so I don't think it needs any type of explanation. It is a table tennis simulation and as I usually do I will explain how to make the basic game and at the end of the video I will give you a few ideas on how to make this game better. Also, in the description of the video, I will leave a Pong game that I made long ago with lots of improvements in case you want to play it because I'm sure you will enjoy it very much. So, if you're ready, let's get started. Alright, as usual, let's begin deleting the cat and we're gonna create all the necessary objects. Let's begin with the paddles. Number one, here, you can change the colors if you want, it can be a gradient between this and this. And uh, let's call it bar one or puddle one or whatever you want. Uh, make sure it is centered, okay? Well, it is not very important in this type of game, but I would do it. And now right click, duplicate, you select it, and you only have to change the colors. Let's pick here this green and that's enough bar one sorry bar two and bar one let's select a ball this one is okay we can change the size to 50 and backdrops here i'm gonna i'm gonna make the backdrop basically two solid colors on the side so that when the ball touches that color um, the other player scores a point so rectangle pick solid color that's important for example this um this dark green no outline make sure this color is not the same as the color here oh by the way this should be on the other side okay that's for the green and another rectangle for the purple over here basically the rectangle has to cover this side all right so now let's place the bars over here and I'm also going to create um, a victory message so choose a sprite paint I'm gonna make yeah, a rectangle like this centered text different color could be white and we write player one wins we select it make it bigger center it this should be in the center, so X0, zero, Y0. Zero. And I'm gonna duplicate, okay? Costume one is for player one, costume two for player two, so I don't need, it needs uh, any more explanation here. We take this and we pick the dark green we've taken before and paint. All right, this spread is gonna be called victory so now let's begin coding the bars the movement of the movement of the bars which is quite easy let me remind you uh, I'm gonna choose another backdrop that well let's hide this that the vertical axis okay is the y axis if we increase the value of y this bar well any object will move upwards and if we decrease, if we reduce the number of Y, the movement of the, of the object is going to be downwards. So, keeping that in mind, let's go to the bars. I'm going to call them. Doing this, when green flag clicked, there's going to be a program that is going to be constantly checking if I press, um, in this case, for example, W, and I'm gonna use W to move the bar upwards. So with this, we're gonna change Y by 10, 10, 8. Well, this number depends on what you prefer. And we can duplicate this. Make sure you put it here, not in there, but here. If we press S, the bar is gonna move downwards. So here we need a negative number. Same program, 
in the green bar but with different keys. Uh, keep in mind there will be two players playing on the same keyboard so uh, in order not to bother each other they have to be separate so one person playing on the right side of the keyboard and the one on the left side of the keyboard. So if one is using W and S which are on the left side of the keyboard player two is gonna play for example with up arrow and down arrow which are on the other side of the keyboard and that way both players will be able to play comfortably okay green flag and let's see if we can move this up down up down all right so we can get rid of this backdrop we don't need it anymore and here in this um in this sprite we're gonna make that when green flag clicked hide okay let's make sure we don't see it all right so the bars are already coded and now we're gonna go to the ball which is the sprite that will have the longest code it's gonna be quite long so let's begin um, when green flag clicked first of all we're gonna place the ball in the center of the screen so go to x0 y0 after that, we're going to make the ball point toward a random direction, but not completely, completely random because if it is pointing, for example, upwards in direction zero, it's going to be moving up and down, up and down, and it's going to be impossible to play. So basically, we're going to give the ball two possibilities, point to the right or point to the left. To do so, you can use this type of block, and we're going to do this. Well. You know that this block, pick random from 1 to 2, gives me two possible numbers, 1 or 2. So, if the number we obtain in this block when we start the game is number 1, the ball is going to point to the right, for example. But not uh, exactly to the right, because we don't want it to be moving horizontally all the time. So, it could be something like... 60 and else if not it's gonna point in direction negative 60 after that the ball is gonna start moving that's gonna be forever so it will move 10 steps and even on edge bounds okay it will bounce on the edges of the screen green flag and Perfect. The ball is moving, but as you see, it does not interact with the bars. Why not? Because we haven't explain, explained the ball how to behave when touching those bars. So let's do it now. Um, if touching one bar or touching the other bar, so we pick an OR and in sensing touching bar one, let's make more space here or touching bar 2 this is gonna change direction look I think you're gonna understand it very easily imagine the ball is going in this direction 60 so here when colliding with the bar it should bounce off that direction which is negative 60 from 60 to negative 60. Another example, imagine it's going in 135 direction or, yeah, for example, that direction, when touching this, it should go that way. So, negative again. So, what we basically have to do is transform the current direction into the opposite. If it is negative, positive. If it is positive, negative. How do we do so? Multiplying the current direction by negative, negative 1. If you're young and you haven't studied negative numbers yet, this might sound a little bit strange to you, but well, it is basically what I've told you, okay? This symbol represents multiplication and we're gonna multiply direction by negative 1. It is that simple. And look, as you see now, it bounces off perfectly. 
What I recommend to avoid some kinds of bugs is adding this here so that after changing direction it moves away from the bar a little bit and that avoids some kinds of bugs that I have experienced uh, sometimes. All right, next step. We need to count the points that each player scores. So how many variables do we need? Two, one for each player. So let's make player one and player two, and you can place them over here. All right, uh, well, we're gonna do this. That's gonna be quite simple. More conditions, everything inside the forever loop because uh, my program is gonna be constantly moving the ball, checking if we touch the bars and also checking if we touch those colors. So if touching color and we use, you know, this tool to pick the color, if we touch color purple, well, if the ball touches purple, that's because player two has scored a point. So we're going to change player two by one. You can duplicate. And if touching green, that type of green, by the way, make sure these colors are not the same as the colors in the bar. In this case, we're going to change player one by one. When we do this, it is super important to go to the beginning of the game and make sure that when we start, both players have zero points. So we set player one and we set player two to zero. All right, uh, this program has a problem. Look, it has touched this only once and six points for player one. How is that possible? Well. Uh, the explanation is very easy. As you see, I'm moving this and every instant, every moment the ball is touching green is adding one more point to the score. So what do we have to do? We have to move the ball to the center after touching the, that color for the first time, which is quite simple. We're gonna go to x0, y0 in both cases and you can also wait for two seconds because if not as soon as it, it goes to the center it, it will start moving again and it is a bit stressful okay and also at the beginning of the game i recommend here before it starts moving that we wait for a couple of seconds so that the players have time to realize the game is going to start and have time to place the fingers on the correct keys and so on all right, so uh, that's done. Let's check it. My God. Okay, one point. It goes to the center and wait. That's good. What else do we have to do? We have to put an end to the game. So uh, another condition here. And we're going to say that if player one or player two have, for example, five points, the game finishes. So I said we need this. If player one equals five or player two equals five, we're going to uh, we're going to inform, we're gonna tell victory that it has to show, it is the moment of the victory message to show up, and we're gonna stop the game. How do we uh, how does the ball talk to victory or informs victory? that it has to appear by using a message. So we're going to broadcast victory and uh, we're going to stop the ball moving. So we're going to stop this script. You can also hide the ball if you want, but if you do it, keep in mind, you have to show it at the beginning, okay? So we broadcast victory, we, we stop this script, Not do not stop all, because if you stop all, if we add any animations here, we are going to, those animations are not going to work because they will be stopped as well. So um, when I receive victory, this is going to show. Show is only this, but if you want to animate it, 
we're going to add um, a kind of zoom in animation. Zoom in at the beginning of the animation, the sprite is little, is tiny. So at the beginning, we're going to set size to zero and we're going to change size little by little, for example, five by five. And math's problem. How many times do we have to repeat five to reach 100? 20, very good, because 20 times 5 equals 100. If I click, observe this. Flip. Perfect, we have the animation. But before the animation, we have to decide what costume we want. So I'm going to separate this here, and it's going to be simple. We put the animation later. We're going to say basically, well, you could use if else this this one as well okay it's gonna be basically the same if player one has five points switch costume to costume one and if player two sorry has five points oh my god we will switch costume to costume two okay and uh that's perfect the game is finished let's see I'm gonna let uh, purple player win, player one. Two points, three points, four points, five points, two seconds, and player one wins. Fantastic. All right, uh, as I promised, two more ideas to make your game better. Uh, idea number one. If both players are very good at this game, they are never going to lose. So we have to increase the speed of the ball as the game um, goes on. So let's go to the ball and we're not gonna move 10 steps all the time. We're gonna change that speed. To change the speed, we need a variable. We create speed, we put speed here and now my game, well, my game, my ball is gonna move speed steps. You can put speed here, um, you can hide it when playing, but now as we're coding, let's keep it there. By the way, speed has to be here. You can also put it here, but this is just a small movement that we make when the ball touches the bar to avoid bugs, but the movement of the ball is this one, so speed has to be there. What do we do? Well. At the beginning of my game, we're gonna set speed to eight, for example. And whenever the ball touches one of the bars, we're gonna increase the speed of the ball. Where? Here. When touching bar one or bar two, we're gonna change speed by, for example, 0 0.5. But this has a problem. Um, at the end, well, not at the end of the game, but when the players are, for example, 3-3 three, three or 3-4, three, the speed is gonna be very, very high. So we have to reset the speed when uh, one of the players scores a point. So uh, here, okay, we're gonna set speed when the ball touches this and we score a point. And also, oops, sorry, remove comment. I wanted to duplicate. And also here, we're gonna set speed to eight. Let's see if that works. Okay, now speed has increased, speed keeps on increasing, and you see the ball is moving faster and faster. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, and finally, the last idea I wanna give you, there are many things that we can do in this game, but I don't wanna make the video super, super long. It's gonna be quite long, as you see is create a message which says goal that shows up whenever a player scores a goal. So we paint on the sprite, we write the message goal, could be red for example, select, make it big, centered, also centered here, okay, x0, y0, and the program is gonna be quite simple, let's call it goal. Basically, when green flag clicked, obviously, it's gonna be hidden and this is going to show when we score a goal. 
how do we let this sprite know that we have scored a goal? Again, by using a message. Messages are very useful in Scratch, guys. So let's go to the ball. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so that you see more or less the program that we have, which is very long, I told you. And we score a goal when we touch this color and this color. So at the very beginning of scoring a goal, we're gonna broadcast goal here and also here. And goal, when receives goal, is gonna do something similar to the program we made in victory. It could set size to zero, show, and change size, in this case, faster. 10 by 10, 10 times. 10 times 10 is 100. Something like this, okay? Something fast. Uh, it's gonna wait there for a couple of seconds, for example, or maybe one second, and then it's gonna hide. Let's see, one second, bye-bye. If you wanna uh, make it hide uh, like fluently, okay, gradually, you can use this. You can change ghost effect by 10, and you also repeat it 10 times and then it hides. If you do this, at the beginning, make sure you clear graphic effects, okay? That's important. So the effect would be this, goal and goes, okay? You wanna try it? Let's try that. Goal number one, I'm not gonna play. Goal number two, Goal number three, we need two more. Goal number four. And goal number five. And player one wins. Perfect, the game works perfectly. And guys, this is the end of the tutorial. Um, as I said before, you can add any other improvements like sound, other colors, well, whatever comes to your mind, you have to be creative. And please uh, leave a comment if you have any question. Leave a comment if you have done it. Uh, you can send me the project to my email. I, you know that I love seeing your projects. And enjoy this game with your family, with your friends, and whoever you want. All right. See you next time, guys. Bye bye.